Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover, I am Penge, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3, where we rejoin Empress Elswith, who last time out had a very, very good day at the office, I think it's fair to say. Firstly, she became a witch, which for Tears is absolutely fine, they can make loads of tea in those huge cauldrons, so Tears love a witch, then she completed the long-standing cupboard dynasty project of unlanding the Catholic Pope, then she conquered Hungary, then she went up here and conquered Lithuania, and then just for good measure, she romanced her husband, so they became soulmates, which was wonderful. So she did very well indeed, did Empress Elswith. She performed her first proper task as Empress splendidly, but of course she's not done there. Oh no, absolutely not, because there is still more Catholicism to deal with. So yes, as we have mentioned, the Pope is very much unlanded right now. The Pope has no land at all, and Catholicism is not looking as popular as it once was, as we can see from the faith overlay here, but there are still some places out there that are Catholic, and that of course is not acceptable. Not at all. Not in any way. These people know not the ways of teism. They're ignorant to the holy sanctity of the teapot. They're oblivious to the twice hourly cup of tea ritual, and they definitely don't believe in the most sacred of all teas moments, the nightly tea bath, where one must submerse oneself entirely in a bath full of tea as a way of, you know, cleaning away the daily sins, that kind of thing. So Empress Elswith is off to find those final few places that are clinging on to Catholicism, and she is going to show them the way to the ket. There's quite a lot of Catholic land over here. Not really happy about that. There's too many Catholics in this part of the world. However, I think if we look at the kingdom titles, yes, most of that land is Lithuanian. So that's okay. So of course, we took this last time out and then we put somebody on the throne who is Tears. Was it Tea Cake? Yes, Queen Tea Cake there. So she is very much a Tearst. And yeah, we made sure that some of her vassals and her dukes and such like were also Tearst. So hopefully... Hopefully they can then pass the message down to the counts who rule all the counties and then we can get the people sort of converted over in due course. So that'll be absolutely fine. So that will work for Lithuania. So that kind of covers off this big bit of Catholic land over here. There is also this great big blob of Catholic land just here. That is not very good to see. That is not good at all. Empress Elswith is most unimpressed, particularly because I think we own all that. Isn't all of that under our control already? Okay, nearly all of it. There's a duchy down here. The Duchy of Gior which is not part of the empire, but they are remaining steadfastly Catholic. Okay, and then, yeah, it looks like most of that Catholic land was in the Kingdom of Bavaria and possibly a little bit in the Kingdom of Bohemia. Okay, we might need to go and look at that. We might need to uh, send some gifts to some people over here, to some, you know, dukes and counts and all that kind of stuff. Send them some lovely, you know, decorated teapots and tea sets and a set of nice sort of tea bags and what have you, just to make sure that they like teism. And then we will ask them to join teism and hopefully the gift we've sent them will be enough to convert them over. Because, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of Catholicism down here. And then, of course, yes, we've got Gyor here. I mean, do we just want to go and have a fight with them? Do we want to have a war for Gyor? I think we probably can take them. Hang on a minute, let's have a little look. What's going on? Duke Hugo, 16,000 people. Yeah, I mean, I think we can just about manage. We've got almost 200,000 people. I imagine if we were to go to war with Duke Hugo here, I imagine we could get the men-at-arms mustered and then just you know, throw in a few levies. Just, you know, just for a bit of extra oomph. I don't think we'd need that many people. I imagine we could win quite easily. So yeah, where do you belong to? Gyor, where do you actually belong to? Hungary. Okay, so when we actually conquer this place, which we are inevitably going to do, we can then return it to the current ruler of Hungary, who is... It's King Raoul, of course it is. It's our cousin, who is very, very good indeed. So, okay, I mean, there's no time like the present. Why don't we just go and have a war right now? Are they fighting anybody? No, they're not. They've got a few allies. They have a few allies, but I don't think that's going to do too much for them. So how about we go and see what we can get... Now, I imagine we should be able to get all the Ure lands, surely. See, so is Ure duchy... Hang on. That's a bit of a duchy. Oh, okay, hang on a minute. Where's Gyor supposed to be? Hang on, duchy titles. Ah, so Gyor, they've got a, they've got the actual you know, counties that make up the de Ure title of the duchy of Gyor, and then they've got some other bits and bobs as well. Okay, okay, Duke Hugo, well done. Can we seize all the Ure lands? Perfect. Yes, we'll have that, please. We will have all of your stuff for 700 prestige. We've got quite a lot of it, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. And uh, yes, you can summon up some allies, but I don't think it's going to matter. No, it is It is slightly irrelevant. So, okay, let us declare war. We've declared war on Gyor. Okay, we might, we might as well just go straight in. We might as well just go straight in here to the capital, because yeah, it makes sense to get that first. Might get some good prisoners. So let's muster up our troops 
just here. So raise the men at arms and then we'll get ourselves just, you know, a handful of levies, I think. Okay, so they've called in the Knights Templar. Fair enough, you've called in a holy order. I kind of get it. Duke Hugo's had a word with the Knights Templar. He's booked them in for a little stay over here in Gior. I don't think that's going to help too much. I mean, how many are there? There's about 10,000 Knights Templar soldiers there. And that's no small amount of people. That is no small amount of people. And because they're Holy Order folks, they're normally pretty well kitted out. They're quite good at fighting. They're not just you know, all levies or whatever. They're actual proper soldiers. But I don't think it'll make too much difference against us. I mean, we have a lot of very, very good men at arms. And also, we can call upon 197,000 people if we need that number of people. So... Yeah, it's fine. Well done on trying to defend yourself, Duke Hugo, but I think we'll be able to muddle through against your defences. So what do we need? Let's just call in a few more people. For how many has he got now? So he's got himself... Hang on. Hang on. How many people have you got, Duke Hugo? How many people do we need to get? 17,000 soldiers. Are you sure, Duke Hugo? There's 18,000 people in this one stack just here. There's another stack just there. Are you fibbing, Duke Hugo? I do not think it's taking into account the Knights Templar. So if they're about 10,000, so he's got 17,000. So let's say he's got about 27,000 soldiers at his disposal. So let's make sure we have a bit more than that, shall we? Let's just let that number tick up. And how about that there? 37,366 soldiers. It's the perfect amount of soldiers to win this war. We've got the stats folks on it and everything. So there we go. That'll do the job. So now, where are they going? They're going over there. So yeah, we want to go and have a fight with their armies. Because of course, when we have a fight with their armies, as we saw in the previous part, we get ourselves some lovely fame and we get some devotion, both of which are quite handy. So let's go over that way. So we should be able to win this fight. We will, we will win decisively. <laughs> there is not a thing going in their favour there. Oh my goodness me. So going in our favour is defending in hills, defensive buildings, better army commander, more army commander traits, more soldiers, higher quality, and more men-at-arms counter. Yes, it's not going to go well for the people of Gyor, is it? Or the Holy Order folks over there. So if we can just get in over here, that would be wonderful. They're trying to run away. Come on, come on, come on. Get in there a bit quicker. Splendid. Okay, hang on. You lot got away. Oh, the Knights Templar went first. They kind of did escape, but now they're coming back in to join the fight. I don't think it's going to make any difference. We've got a plus 39 advantage, plus 37, plus 28, plus 35. I don't think they're going to win this one. As good as they are, 45, a plus 45 advantage. That was very silly. And because we've had a nice fight over here, we're also no longer obese, which is lovely. Yay, that was a very good day. And we're, we've gone up. We are now a religious icon oh my goodness me we've gained a level of devotion we are now as devoted as we could be and we gained a level of fame as well <laughs> okay that was very impressive that was quite an important battle then so the battle of whatever it's called s zagom that place at the battle of this place here was very very important for elsworth because that's elevated her up to become a living legend and a religious icon she's not even been in charge that long She's not been in charge that long at all, and she's already reached the top levels here and here. That's very impressive. Oh my goodness me. Um, right. Well, there we go. There we go. That was that was very successful. Let's just pop over here and do some sieging down of this place. Then we'll siege down the capital, and then we'll see if we can get, you know, win this war and get everything under our control. What have we got? Oh no. Hang on. Somebody died. The Queen of Italy died. Oh no. She got killed in battle. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Hang on, who's taken over Italy now? Who is now ruling Italy? Let's have a quick look. It is King Ragnvild of Italy, who is... Oh, he's not very good, is he? He's not very good at all. Okay, never mind, never mind. That's fine. That's their own thing to deal with. Right, so we'll siege this down. How long is that going to take? Oh, it's going to take a little while, isn't it? It's relatively, relatively well defended. How defended is that place as well? 18. Crikey's. Okay, so yeah, Fort Level 18. But I think if we get those two places, particularly the capital, if we take the capital, that's got to be a huge amount of war score. 
and we're already on plus 28 war score from that one fight we've had over here. So, um, yeah, let's just siege this place down. Then we'll move over to the capital. And we have converted our daughter and, of course, our player heir, Anna, over to witchcraft. Wonderful stuff. So there we go. Yes, I watch the sleeping shape of Anna while I send a quick prayer to the horn god. As soon as the last whispered words pass my lips, she stirs as if her subconscious mind has waited for this moment. When I step out of the shadows and offer Anna his blessing, there is no fear or hesitation in her eyes. No, her acceptance is wholehearted and hungry. And she might be a little bit annoyed that we woke her up in the middle of the night. Why do we have to do this when she's asleep? Could we not just do this kind of thing over dinner or something? I don't know. Okay, welcome to the communion, sister. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on. How well are we going in that? So which coven, what have we got? Only 17.7%. Okay, but never mind. Never mind. I think let's try and convert some more of our more of our siblings. So you've been converted to witchcraft. Okay, Judith, did we convert you? I think we did. Okay. What about you, Siegbert? No. Okay. There we go. So convert Siegbert over to witchcraft because then if we convert our siblings, it's more likely that they are then going to convert their children and that increases that percentage that we saw there that we need to actually you know, found a witch coven. It's all very exciting. Apparently, yes, in the comments as well, it has to be our house here. It's got to be house cupboard. It can't be all the cadet branches and all that kind of stuff. So it looks like this lot are all fine for that. They are all of directly house cupboard, not different sort of cadet branches they've kind of spun off and stuff. Okay, that's fine. Let's try and convert Siegbert then. And then we shall carry on sieging this place down. I mean, yo, it's taking a little while longer than it used to because we haven't got the sappings to first uh, skill, all that kind of stuff. But it's still going very well. What are we on? 44%. And I imagine if we take their capital, that's quite a chunk. Minting new coinage. Oh, there's something else just there. Minting new coinage. Okay, we're going to make some new lovely coins. We can melt silver coins to facilitate trade. That is development growth at plus 5% across the entire of the empire. Okay, mint them with our face on it. Seems a little bit kind of self-aggrandizing. 350 prestige. Or debase the coinage with inexpensive nickel. Ah, right, yeah. So we try and, you know, make things a bit cheaper. So we get ourselves. It's a stewardship challenge, which we have a 100% chance of succeeding. I think we might do this. So we save a fortune on minting the coins. So we get 300 money, which, you know, is nice. That's good. We get 100 stewardship lifestyle and we get the 5% development growth. Yeah, let's do that because we're bound to succeed. Okay, wonderful. So that's 5% development across the entire empire. That's brilliant. And then we've got ourselves some tournament troubles. Okay, so what's going on? Looking around, I noticed my vassal Earl Leofia, you just there, sitting under a nearby pavilion, clearly bored halfway to death. On the other hand, this could be a good opportunity to eavesdrop on the conversations of other attendees. Okay, what have we got in terms of stress? 19 so we could lose quite a chunk of stress and gain a friend in this person here. Okay, you're you're quite good, actually. You're quite good. You're quite capable. You're a bit ill, but I'm sure you'll get over it. That's fine. Okay, or we could discover a random secret from inside the realm. That sounds exciting. Or we could just give up and go home and lose a bit of stress. Um, are we going to do much of the secret? I think maybe let's do this. Let's get ourselves a friend. Have we got any friends? That's entirely sure. Oh, we've got many friends. Oh, crikeys. It looks like a lot of our siblings. So, yeah. So, Enswith, our sister. Uh, Agalina, our daughter. That's our friend, whoever that person is. Then our sister, and then our sister. So, we're th uh, friends with three of our sisters, one of our daughters, and then just this random person here. Okay. I mean, let's become friends with this chap. Why not? Yes. There we go. We're going to lose 13 stress which brings us down to a nice lowly six. That is all. That is very good indeed. And then how long is it going to take? A couple of months. Okay, that's fine. A couple of months can tick by and then we'll hopefully take this place. Okay, 21 days left on the siege, but of course some other stuff has happened. So Ormond Red, I assume that's how you pronounce that, he has come of age. So what have you got? A three-star education trait. Not brilliant. Not brilliant. So let's just move that on. So what have you got in total? Stewardship 19. I mean, you're okay. You're okay. You're not very good at intrigue. But then again, that's not something that the uh, Cupboard Dynasty has been overly brilliant at. But yeah, your other stuff is is okay. You're sort of doing all right. You're stubborn, you're honest, and you're gluttonous. We like the gluttonous. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. I mean, yeah, we need to get you married then at some point. But that's all absolutely fine. And we can pick another perk. 
Um, well, we're going down toward Architect, so let's have organised muster rolls, please. Let's get our levies being reinforced 100% quicker, thank you very much. And then this place is going to fall in absolutely no time at all. There we go, sorted. I write to inform you that your nephew Benedict has eloped with your daughter Anna. Oh, okay. <laughs> this could be a problem because Anna, of course, is the heir to everything. Uh, let me be frank. This is a grave insult and a stain on your family's honour. If the happy couple seek refuge in Northampton, I trust you will teach them a lesson. Oh, hang on. Has Anna gone... Has she ran off? Um, Anna? Anna, are you okay? You don't look okay. You've lost one of your eyes and you're wounded. Oh, okay. This is, this is fascinating. What's happened to you? What has happened here? I mean, yeah, that's... That's the lady that we said she should marry. We uh, The guy, sorry, that she should marry. That's the chappy. We organised that. We set that whole thing up. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. Princess Anna II will matrilineally marry Benedict Cupboard. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? No, no, this is, this is... This is a terrible idea. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> Anna, what are you doing? Oh my goodness me. Is that even allowed? Can we, can we not organise a divorce with this? No, we can't. Oh, dear. Okay. That is... Oh, we've taken that place as well. Sorry, I was distracted. Well done, troops. Um, Troops, go over to there. That looks like a nice, easy place to go and get your hands on. Um, Right, so our daughter and our, our heir, the person that's going to inherit the empire, all of this stuff, has decided that she did not want to marry the person that we said she should marry and that she was married to. And that's kind of all been called off, and she's now eloped with Prince Benedict. Okay, hang on, hang on. Prince Benedict is who? So that is, that's Herigith's son. Oh my goodness me. Oh dear. Okay, so they're cousins. They are cousins. Okay, that is, <laughs> that is unexpected. I was not expecting that to happen. And um, he's not very good at all. He's not that good in terms of his stats or anything. Yeah, the other person was brilliant. The other person was really good that you were married to, Anna. What are you playing at here? And yes, yeah, somehow you've wounded yourself and you've only got one eye now. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, dear me. Good grief. Kids, you see. Kids, just who'd have them? And now her former husband, Kahar Shahabuddin, the chappy with the amazing name and the pretty good stats, he's just now sort of hanging around in her court. He's just sort of stood about in court, which I imagine must be very awkward. He does look incredible. That is an incredible suit of armour you've got on there. That's very wonderful. I mean, yeah, the, the hat slash helmet alone is fantastic. And you've got all this stuff going on. That's very, very impressive. But yeah, he's just sort of now awkwardly just sort of hanging around court where she is. It's her court. He's just sort of lurking about the place, looking a little bit envious at, uh, at Prince Benedict there. Oh dear. Right, well, there we go. There we go. I mean, we can't do too much about it. I don't think we can do that much about it. We can't sort of imprison people or whatever. It's happened. It's sort of out of our control. She's 23. She's doing her own thing. She's got her own court and whatever. So, okay, fine. There we go, Anna. You're making things complicated. Okay, so about 15 days left until we siege this place down. Is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough? It is enough. Hang on a minute. I just saw something very important there. Alliance expired with Herigith. Did we have an alliance with Herigith? I assume we had an alliance with Herigith at some point. However, no longer because she is dead. Our sister Queen Herigith has died from her wounds. So yeah, she did. I mean, she was in prison. So something bad must have happened to her in prison to give her some wounds that she then died of. Okay, there we go. I mean, I won't miss you too much, Queen Herigith. You were not a nice person. We, at some point, we were going to be playing as you. We had all the all the plans set up that we were going to play as you. And then you tried to do a couple of very silly things. You tried to poison your mum with some poisonous gold. And then you tried to brick your mum up into a cellar and leave her to die. So, you know, I think being in a prison was the right place for you. A few people in the comments, a few people in the comments were sort of a little bit, a little bit sort of forgiving toward Queen Herigith there. They were saying, oh, what if someone else sent the gold? What if somebody else sent the gold too short, the poisonous gold, but under the name of Queen Herigith? And it's been, okay, maybe that did happen. Maybe that is a thing. But it is absolutely cast iron proof that Queen Herigith tried to brick short up into a cellar and leave her to die there. That, ab yeah, that was unequivocal. You can't argue that fact. So, yeah, she did try and kill her own mum once, if not twice. 
And yes, of course, here, she's a murderer. She was a murderer. So she wasn't a nice person, was Queen Herigith. So farewell, Queen Herigith. We're, we're going to get a massive pile of stress. I don't really think we should have that stress. Because, yeah, we're not that bothered. I'm not that, you know, I don't think she'd be that sad. I don't think she'd be that bothered. But okay, fine. We need to do something to, um, to lose some stress. Right, let's sort this out first. So there we go. All sorted. 190 fame. Don't really need it. And Duke Hugo becomes, ah, becomes King Raoul's vassal. Yeah, there we go. So we sort that out. And then, yes, Duke Hugo immediately moves over to become a vassal of uh, King Raoul here. And there we go. Everything all sorted. Right, disband all those troops over there. And now there's another bit of land added to the empire. Marvellous. And 56 stress is a little bit too much stress right now. I mean, if we just lost 50 stress from our sister dying, what if another one of our siblings dies? That will push us over. Another 50 will push us over to a break. So how about we go on a bit of a hunt? Let's go hunting in one of the baronies in our realm. 46 stress we're going to lose. Yes, please. Let's do that because we're brave. We love going on a hunt. Okay, absolutely sound the horn. Let's get this show on the road. So yeah, 10 stress is all we've got now. Wonderful. A rampaging boar. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. This is intriguing. So just as my vassal, Queen Magdalena, okay, so of Pomerania, and I crest a hill, we hear it. The snapping of twigs, the rustle of branches, birds screaming in fright, a herald announcing its arrival, a massive boar heading straight for us. Okay, so we have ourselves some choices. We could either do a prowess challenge. So what's that? 76% chance that we slay the beast, and no, I slay the beast, gain hunting trophy for 10 years, 0.5 prestige per month. Okay, handy. 24% chance we get injured, no percent chance that we die. Oh, that's quite encouraging. There's like ominous skull here, but okay. Or we just make her deal with it. And that means that Queen Magdalena gets a hook on us. No, no, no. Or we gain friend of animals for 20 years. <laughs> okay. Prestige 0.2 per month and stress loss plus 25%. Why can we, why can we talk to animals? I don't understand. Why is that a thing? Hang on, because of our diplomacy skill. Does a, does a charging massive boar understand the intricacies of diplomacy? Clearly it does. I mean, I'm going to go for that. Prestige going up. Okay, that's nice. But it's the stress thing. Stress loss plus 25%. When we lose stress, we lose 25% more stress. So we can end up being quite chilled out. Yeah, let's do that. Let's become a friend of animals and have a chat with a huge boar that's rushing toward us. Which is... Unexpected, I will give you that, but there we go. I assume it's worked. And there we go. The hunt is done. We return home, all sorted, and now we're an animal friend as well. <laughs> ah, Crusader Kings 3, you are never short of surprises. I think we've got ourselves a couple of weddings we need to sort out here. So we've got ourselves Seal Fled. I don't think she's married, no. And then Ormond Red most definitely isn't. So we need to sort out a couple of marriages. The other two kids, the eldest, are sorted out, aren't they? Yeah, Agalina was married to you. Ah, yes, that was a betrothal, but now he's come of age. So they're married, which is wonderful. And of course, Anna is currently married to Prince Benedict there. Although, you know, it depends on what day of the week it is as to who Anna is married to, because, you know, she likes to chop and change things around. So at the moment, it's Benedict. Who knows how long that will last? So yes, it looks like Seal Fled and Ormond Red. Okay, well, let's do Ormond Red because we just clicked on you. So let's have a little look, Ormond Red. Who can you get married to? That is going to be pretty good. I mean, if we could get geniuses in, if we could get geniuses in, that would be that would be advantageous. That would be wonderful. However, however, you're quite good. Have we altered it by some of all skills? And you're coming up as one of the best ones. Really? Hang on. Really? Your stats are most decidedly average. I would say that probably somebody with 13, 13, 13, 23 and 4 is more than somebody with 8, 10, 10, naught and 12. Hang on. Hang on, I need to add that. Hang on, no, does it take into account your your prowess? Oh my word. A prowess of 31. <laughs> that is, that is remarkable. Oh, can we just, can we just get her in and make her a knight? That would be completely amazing. She's very good. She's strong, which gives her plus four to her prowess. Then she's Amazonian, which gives you plus eight to your prowess. And then she's a master hunter, which is plus six. <laughs> that That's ridiculous. Yeah, can we just get you sorted? Yeah, just marry her. <laughs> that's going to be amazing. That is going to be wonderful. And I think as well, the sort of that physical trait is the one that he's not got. So yes, yeah, for any children they may have, 
might have all three of those traits. It might have the brainy trait and the appearance trait and the kind of, you know, physical build trait. Yeah, okay, that'll do. Okay, can we just get that in now, actually? Can we just make sure that she comes in and is a knight immediately? Yes, 31 prowess. Just this, this amazing Amazonian super strong master huntress coming in to lead the charge. That is, that is exceptional. Okay, that is very good. And now we need to sort out a uh, a marriage for you as well. Now, what I don't understand is, obviously, when we ordered that by sum of all skills, it did look a bit weird because, yeah, the her lady, the lady was married. Her skills were not that wonderful in terms of the five across here, but her prowess was very, very good. Why isn't prowess just shown on this list? Why can't we just put prowess just here? Because, yeah, it looked a bit weird. Her stats didn't look like they were in the right place until we realised that the prowess stat was really, really high. Anyway, who have we got here? So, again, have we got the it's set to inheritable traits? You, you've you got one each of the three, so that's pretty good. Martin, no, because that's all very awkward. Okay, I mean, that, that could also be an awkward marriage arrangement. Maybe not you either. Do you know what? Maybe we've overlooked Martin cupboard here. Poor Martin, a little bit too readily. So, yes, of course, we considered him last time to marry Agalina or Anna, didn't we? And then we kind of thought, do you know what? He's a cupboard, they're cupboards. It's going to result in inbreeding. We went to have a look at the family tree. And I think, if I remember correctly, that we worked out that Martin and our children were second cousins. So related, not closely related, but still related, you know, relatively distantly. And I then just said, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that at all, because that's going to result in inbreeding and that's going to be bad. So then we chose somebody else. But then people in the comments on the previous video have said that the bad sort of traits that appear due to inbreeding are really very, very rare indeed. They hardly ever appear, if at all. And of course, we've got ourselves strong blood, which I think reduces the chance of bad traits. And then, of course, we got ourselves, I can't remember what it's called, it's in here, we've got ourselves resilient bloodline. So that's a chance of new bad congenital traits down by another 30%. So I think we might be okay. I think we might be okay. And Martin is very good. Martin is very, very good, particularly at Marshall. And that is where Seal Fled is lacking a little bit. That's her lowest trait. And that is Martin's best trait. So they kind of, yeah, they complement each other quite well. He's a genius and he's comely. And so are you. Yes, yeah, Seal Fled is a genius and comely. So I think if we pick you, they'll definitely get genius. The children will definitely get comely and it might intensify up to pretty. And there's a bit of a slim chance that they might possibly get hail as well. I mean, that's pretty good. That is pretty good going. And of course, yeah, there's a red thing there. They're related. There's a risk of their children being inbred. I think, I think we take that risk. I think that's now fine. Thank you, people in the comment section for uh, for pointing that out. Yes, I think we're going to go for this. Let's go for this. I mean, I do feel a bit sorry for him because Martin could have possibly been married to, to Agalina or even Anna. He could have been married to Anna and therefore been in line to be an emperor. Although, actually, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, Anna ditched her husband that we arranged for her and went for this chap here. So, you know, maybe, maybe he dodged a bullet there or a whatever the appropriate kind of, you know, projectile would be for the year 1374. I don't know. But whatever the case, I think he got away with that one. So let's marry him to uh, Seal Fled. Let's get that done, shall we? So there we go. Send that proposal. Let's just see if they accept. I mean, yes, I imagine they're going to accept. It's going to be fine. And there we go. Sorted. So hang on. How young are the two youngest children? Ten and eight. Okay, so a little while to go until they're actually going to need to be married. And we won't sort out sort of betrothals and stuff. We'll wait till they come of age and then we'll sort out, you know, husbands for them. And as usual, I forgot about the prisoners. Yeah, we've got 13 prisoners ranging from being in prison for two months through to being imprisoned for 18 months. Of course, these people are in house arrest, so that's not so bad. This poor person here, though, has been in a dungeon for 17 months. I feel like we should possibly let them out. So let's go through and let them out. If we can convert them, then we will do. If not, we'll try and get some money off them or hooks or whatever. Okay, wonderful stuff. So now Siegbert has converted over to witchcraft. Well done. We'll get you your pointy hat. So that's you sorted. Right, who can we go for now? Enswith. The only thing is, she's a matriarch. Is that is that going to work? Can we convert her? I mean, it's all okay in Tearsum. It's brilliant in Tearsum. We love the witchcraft. Yeah, 95%. Okay, right. Convert you. That's all absolutely fine. And then lots of people are being released from the prison. I think a few people have joined the scheme to actually to actually convert him over to become a witch. 
I mean, it's fine. It's not that important. It'd be great if we could get it done, but it's not that important. So these two here, all the other people in the prison left after being converted over to Tearsum. However, these two were going to do something a little bit different. So these two chappies here are both Lithuanian princes. So we want to make sure that they lose all of their claims so in the future they can't come back and try and take Lithuania away from us because that would all be very tedious. So yes, I think what we do is we go into here. Now, unfortunately, they're not going to convert to Tearsum and renounce their claims. They're just not going to do that at all, which is a bit of a shame. I think, I think we can accept two less tears in the world to then have two people who've not got a great big bunch of claims on loads of our land. I think that's absolutely fine. So you may leave the prison person with that name, Zagota, if you renounce claims on all of these things. I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot of land to lose claims to, but okay, so sort that out. And then you, are you the same? Renounce claims is 50, conversion. Ah, no, you're different. You are going to accept. So you're going to become a Tist and renounce all those claims, including a claim on the Kingdom of Lithuania, which is wonderful. Yes, okay, right, let's negotiate your release. So are you going to go for it? Yes, and yes, there we go. So one of them converted to Tearsum and lost all their claims. The other one just lost all their claims. Oh, this is interesting. The Doomsday Book. That's a real actual thing. This is a real thing. My steward King Arnsatel has come up with the bold idea of assessing all property in my realm in a single giant survey, creating a definitive record of my holdings. By compiling this knowledge, I would gain better oversight in administrative matters as well as tax collection, though the initial investment would not be cheap. We've got 20,000 gold on to tell. I think it's fine. Okay, so I will know every acre, surf and head of livestock. So we lose 500 gold. That's fine. We make that back in a couple of months. So that's not too much of a problem. We might gain a, a perk, which is lovely. In a few months, based on the quality of the completed survey, every county in the Empire of Cupboard, control increases relative to survey quality, gives proportionally high holding taxes for five years. Or, if the survey goes wrong, King Arnsatel spends some stuff. A summary of my holdings will be sufficient. That's 300 money, or why bother? No, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's create a doomsday book. Why not? It costs us 500 gold. We've got loads of it. And yes, if control goes up, that's always very handy. And then, yeah, they might give us a bit more money. Not that we need any more money, but do you know what? It's fine. We'll take it. So, yes, let's do that. 500 gold initial outlay. So that takes us below 20,000, but there we go. Right, do we want to go to a feast with you? What's our stress? 10. Do you know what? It's fine. Got more important matters to attend to. We're cataloguing every single bit of land and who owns everything, and it's going to take ages. So I'm kind of, you know, working on that right now. So here we go. Queen Judith is concerned that my assessors will be a prime target for bandits and thieves. Even an incomplete survey could give criminals valuable information about potential targets they could attack. In order to keep my subjects safe, Judith recommends sending an armed guard with each assessor. Right, this is just going to be money, isn't it? It's just going to be a money-gathering thing. My law is sufficient protection for my subjects. My assessors may be attacked in counties with low control. Organise a militia to guard my assessors. Martial challenge. 77% chance that works. Or send a knight. We lose 300. My assessors will be protected from attacks on the road and she likes us a little bit because obviously we took her idea okay that's fine yeah let's do that we lose 300 gold again it's just going to be a kind of gold spending exercise now i imagine but then if it works and the whole thing actually is done properly then yes we can get loads and loads of money back in the future i imagine that's how it's going to work okay i like this we're cataloging everything um okay hang on i've been faithfully paying my dues to the crown each year yet just the other day your tax assessor showed up on my doorstep demanding to expect my holdings do you trust me so little that you must send men to invade my privacy? You're the Queen of Burgundy. Of course I trust you. My men show it apart post haste. Okay, so the survey declines in quality. She likes us a bit more, but she likes us lots anyway. And yeah, that means that also, yeah, Burgundy is not included in our great big kind of, you know, assessment. Or I will know what my lands contain, no exceptions. The survey increases in quality and she just gets a little bit annoyed with us. I think we go for that. If we're going to do it, Let's do it properly. It might annoy some people, but that's absolutely fine. And she likes us anyway. She likes us anyway. Where is, where is the, where's Bur, hang on. Where is Burgundy? Where's the Kingdom of Burgundy based? Hang on a minute. Where, where is it? It should be down here somewhere. Hang on. Um, okay. Reeve Wolfhelm has come to me saying the Bosworth Carpenters Guild in the Earldom of Leicestershire is bulking against her inclusion in the assessment. 
Why is that? They claim the assessment violates the privileges they have been granted regarding the management of their own affairs and what my assessors record from the county so they can operate freely. Okay, hang on. So the Carpenters Guild. The Carpenters Guild want the assessors to leave the entire county. Okay, my guilds will be assessed. Privileges be damned. Survey increases in quality. Earldom of Leicestershire gains resentful guilds. What does that do? Buildings are a bit more expensive and a bit more lengthy to construct. Okay, I can cope with that. Um, I could exempt them in exchange for their services. We get discounted guild services. Okay, or they reject my authority, revoke their charters. The control level in Leicestershire goes up by 20. Let's just say this. The guilds will be, as will be assessed. Privileges be damned. It's fine. I, I, we want them to... Yeah, the survey will increase in quality. I don't want it to decrease in quality. We want the survey to be done properly. So, yeah, the guilds are going to be assessed. We'll have resentful guilds in Leicestershire for a bit. It's fine. I'm sure we can muddle through. Okay, the Queen of Pomerania has come to us with the same concerns. She's not happy that uh, people are inspecting her holdings. So we can do the same thing again. I trust you. I will know what my lands contain. Or there is a different option. Hiding something, is she? Replace my assessors with spies. If we do that, we get one of her secrets. But again, the survey is declining in quality. Um, no, again, we'll do this. We'll do this. I will know what my lands contain. No exceptions. The survey increases in quality and she loses 10 opinion of us. That's fine. She's got 92 opinion of us right now, so we can lose 10. That is all fine. Okay, the Doomsday Book is a very lengthy kind of story thing. I like this. Reeve Oswald tells me travelling merchants have been complaining about my assessors in the Earldom of Staffordshire. The travelling merchants seem to think it is unfair to have their wares assessed when they are not residents of the Empire of Cupboard and several are threatening to leave and never return. Okay, so we're assessing even travelling people because we want to know what they're bringing in, I imagine, what the kind of you know, import-export stuff is. Okay, so everyone will be surveyed, residents or not. Survey increases in quality, but the Earldom of Staffordshire gets avoided by merchants for five years. Holding taxes down 10%, development growth down 20%. Okay, that's not that's not ideal. It's not the end of the world. Holding taxes don't really care. Development growth down 20% is not wonderful. That's not great. The merchants make a fair point. So yes, the uh, survey declines in quality, but we get encouraged travellers. Development goes up. Or if they pay me a fee, I will exempt them. Survey declines in quality, but we get 300 gold. Don't care about the gold. I think we need to... We need to put our foot down here and just say, no, whatever we need to do to make the survey increase in quality, we do. These effects are, I mean, yeah, okay. Okay, development growth down 20%. It's only for five years. It's not so bad. So yeah, absolutely. Everyone is going to be surveyed, residents or not. Everybody in the empire, whether you're traveling in or going out or, I don't know, on holiday, you've come to the seaside or whatever, you can, you can all tell us your secrets. A snake at court. Okay, seal fled. Oh, hang on a minute. Count Conrad has crept up to seal fled's window. Oh, this is all, this is all a little bit, this is contentious. Hang on a minute. Hang on, are you an adulterer? You're a witch and you're pregnant, which is nice, congratulations. Okay, nothing seemed to come of that of her anyway. And there we go, Enswith. Enswith is now a witch, splendid. Maybe we can work on Ethelfrith. Hello, convert you to witchcraft. Oh, only a 40% chance of success with that one. I wonder why that is. Why that? Ah, because you are paranoid. Okay, right, okay, you've got the idea in your head that bad things are going to happen. Can we invite agents? No. No, we can't. So we've got a 40% chance that might work. Okay, we'll have to try it. We'll have to try and chance it. The Doomsday Book. After many long months surveying my lands, it is done. Under my guidance, my assessors compiled an absolutely perfect record of my holdings with everything detailed down to the last chicken this will ensure i collect the full and complete tax owed to me every year <laughs> i would like to read this i want to know how many chickens there are in the village that's right there um beaming with pride my steward aunt still asked where we should store the records now that they are complete okay restrict access to only my tax collectors we get ourselves a perk so a stewardship perk which is good we gain the nickname the meticulous which is very exciting. We get 150 prestige, okie doke, and we get hoarding assessment records for five years. Stewardship up plus one, intrigue up plus one, and then we get the lovely thing that's already happened. So yeah, the control level's gone up and we've got excellent quality assessment. So we're producing 10% more money in all of the holdings. Okay, or we distribute the records among the public. 
So we get ourselves the perk and we get the meticulous. We get the prestige. Ansatel gets some stuff, but then we get distributed assessment records for five years. Development growth up 20%. Yeah, why don't we do that? That makes sense. We get our perk, we get the title, but then development goes up across, what, the entire of the empire? Yes, yes, absolutely. Distribute the records among the public, please, answer tell. Let's get development up everywhere. That's, that's very good. That is very, very good indeed. And we get ourselves a perk. Let's get popular fighead. I mean, that ties in quite nicely. We do a great big, you know, a census of the land, if you like. And then people like us for it. We've given the results back to the people. The people can find out things and, you know, information and stuff. We're not keeping it secret. And then we get ourselves popular opinion up by 50, which is a lot. That is very, very good indeed. So, yeah, if we just go and have a quick look now. Like, Lester, look. Popular opinion plus 77. That is very, very good indeed. Well, there we go. Well, that's wonderful. That's worked out quite nicely indeed. Do you know what we didn't do? We did not take a further look at dealing with these Catholic lands over here and over here, did we? We kind of took that place. We took Gior, whatever it was called, over here. Bit of a fight for that. And then I completely forgot to do anything else with these particular places down here that are very, very Catholic right now. So how about we go and have a look over here? So we've got ourselves the Kingdom of Bavaria. It's mostly these bits over here that are all Catholic. So let's have a look. Tears, tears, tears. They're all tierists. They're all tierists. It's looking good in terms of in terms of the uh, the dukes. How about though? Let's have a little look here. Let's have a look underneath. There we go. A lot of the counts are you, Count Gilbert of Krems. You are a Catholic. Shame on you. Right. Send you a gift. Send you a lovely you know, hand decorated teapot, and then demand your conversion one hundred percent. Okay, so convert him over. Wonderful. So there we go. That's what we're going to have to do to try and just remove Catholicism from here. And level of splendor has gone up as well, has it really? We are now glorious. Oh, this is wonderful. The Cupboard Dynasty is glorious. Actually officially recognised in the game. I mean, what's the top one? Fabled and legendary. So it's going to take us a while to get to Fabled. I don't know if we'll get there. Seven thousand renown is required and we're earning 9.2 per month i don't think we'll get there i don't think we'll get there but do you know what glorious glorious is wonderful we'll take glorious that sounds good okay go back to here so yeah so that's converted you yes yeah, so you're catholic we're gonna have to convert over a load of um a load of catholic counts aren't we that's just gonna be it's just going to be how we change these places over. Okay, that's fine. Well, I mean, we've got plenty of money, so let's just send them some gifts and then demand they convert. Yeah, this might take a little while. Though, to be fair, to be fair, there's only two of them in there that were that were Catholic. How many in here? None in there that are Catholic. Okay, actually, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. This is not as bad as I thought it was going to be at all. Most of them over here are indeed Teists. Your account? Yeah, and they're all tears. Oh, okay. Right. This is fine. Well, let's just go through and check. Let's just make sure that everybody is actually a tierist uh, that's being looked after by Queen Judith here over in Bavaria. I think it's just these two people that now they've received their gifts should then, yes, indeed, convert over to tierism. Just one? Hang on. Weren't there two? Or did you already convert? We might have already converted you. There we go. So it was only those two over there. So it's just a slow process. It's just a very, very slow process of converting that land over. Okay, that's fine. I mean, could, could we get, could we get you to help? Enswith, could you lend a hand, please? Could you come down here? We'll just pick a place in the middle somewhere. How about um, that place there, Sopron? That'll do. Can you convert that over? And then, yeah, if you do that in four, four years, goodness, that's slow. Development minus 1.85. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. Can you can you move to a different place? That's gonna take four years. Maybe that's why they're not converting it over as quickly as we would like, because yes, the development is relatively low around that part of the world. And yes, just converting faith over is quite slow. Okay, maybe not over there. Can we just convert some other places? I mean, these are our lands. These are our lands. Herefordshire. Yeah, go and change that over. Oh, that's four years as well. That's four years. 
Okay, fine. We're going to need to wait four years to convert some places over to Tearsum. Right, okay, I've got it. Four years is the magic number. And just popped over to Lithuania just to check on tea cakes vassals. And yeah, there's a few in here that we've had to uh, send some gifts to as well. Hopefully they will all convert. So that's one done. And that's two done. That's three done. Okay, right. So there we go. There we go. So lots more people converted over to Tearsum. Hopefully that will make a big difference. Hopefully that will, you know, slowly start the spread of Tearsum in those particular places. And we can found yet another university. Where can we do this now? Uh, Madrid. Uh, okay, do you know what? Why not? We've got the money, we've got everything else. We're now known as the Scholar. I don't really want to be known as the Scholar. I'd rather be known as the Meticulous. I quite like that. That sounds better. Can we pick our titles? A new nickname now known as the Scholar. I like the Meticulous. Can we not carry on being known as the Meticulous? I'd rather have that. Okay, so in Madrid, is it that one? No, is that Madrid? Okay, and um, yes, build a university. Costs over a thousand gold, but we've got, we've got what? 21,000 gold, just, well, we did have 22,000, just, you know, lying around the place. So yeah, that's fine. Get a university built over here, please. So there we go. Hopefully that will help deal with the problem of Catholicism at a very ground level. We've converted over all of the rulers of the land of those particular troublesome places. So all of the, you know, the mayors and the barons and the counts and the earls and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully they can go to the people of the respective places they're looking after. Yeah, you know, the towns and the temples and the counties and all that kind of stuff. And they can tell them about all the good things that Tearsum can bring to them. All the wonderful things, you know, the teapots and the tea sets and the parties and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully they can convince them to forget about that silly Catholicism nonsense. That's your really old hat. That's really, you know, 1370. Nobody does that anymore. Tearsum is the way forward. So hopefully that will work. I'd like to think that, yeah, we've invested enough money and effort in converting people over. Yeah, we've done quite a lot of stuff to hopefully start seeing Tearsum spreading in those little places that we've worked on. And I think now Empress Elswith is going to go and deal with what I think is the last great bastion of Catholicism left, probably in the entire world, I think. Now, I've had a little look around and I can only find two more kingdoms that are Catholic. There's this one just here, the Kingdom of White Rus which is a wonderful name. It's even got an apostrophe in it just there. I mean, that's very exciting. But there we go. This place here, they're Catholic and it's a kingdom. They are tiny, however. They're very, very tiny. They've not even got a military strength of 2,000. So if we did want to go and take this and convert it over to Tearsum, I think that would be fine. I don't think that would be too much of a problem. So this place, yes, it's Catholic. Yes, it's a kingdom. It is not the final great hope for Catholicism, however. That is all the way down here. The Kingdom of Tehert, I think, is the final place where Catholicism is looking pretty strong. If we go and look at the uh, faith overview there, yes, you can see that Catholicism is very, very powerful around here. Now, this is made slightly kind of uh, slightly bigger looking than it should be, Catholicism down here, because a lot of the land over here is just impassable terrain. So this massive big chunk of land here is impassable terrain, but it's currently impassable terrain that is Catholic. And we don't want that. We want to change the impassable terrain to be tierced impassable terrain because it's better that way. So I think we go to war for the kingdom of Tehert. Now, the only thing is, I don't imagine we have any claims on this. We probably have no decent claims at all. We have one claim, Duchess Dua. Okay, hang on, what's that for? Oh, they've got this place here. They've got the party island of Ibiza. Okay, okay, that's interesting. I mean, yes, we could go to war with them and get Ibiza. And Ibiza is very important for parties, but I think maybe, maybe what we need to do is, we can't do a Diore thing. Yeah, Diore is just going to get us Ibiza. Diore Duchies is going to get us not very much. Hang on, that's just going to get us Ibiza again. It seems obsessed in giving us Ibiza. There's a little bit down here which we could take, which again is not overly brilliant. Or we could use Empress Elswith's one and only kingdom level holy war and go and take this. I mean, that's a lot of land. That's a lot of land that we could take in one war. 750 piety. We've got a lot of it. And I think that's what we do. I think that's the plan. I think we just take this. We do this now. One kingdom level holy war we can do. Let's do it now. Now, let's have a quick look. How old are you? You're 55. You're 55 years old. So, you know, you're not going to be around for another, what, 20 years or whatever, I would not imagine. So I think this is a good use of your one kingdom level war. I think that's it. I can't see any other kingdoms that we'd want to go and attack that are as kind of, you know, important and influential as that one just there. So I think this is it. Let's go and do this, shall we? So 
let's go for a holy war for the kingdom of to hurt we could do a holy war for the kingdom of valencia and get ibiza but you know what ibiza can wait let's get to hurt let's go and do this they've not got that much in the way of military strength so let us declare war a great holy war has been declared and we're just gonna sort of get our troops over here and just walk over and get the capital i think i think that makes perfect sense so we'll get everybody over there right let's have a quick look what have they got not very many people at all. I feel a bit bad. I and mean, we could, we could call up a holy order just for fun. Can we do that? No cost. The Knights of Santiago. Yeah, let's call them in. They're very good. Oh my goodness me. Yeah, absolutely. Get them in. So that's seven and a half thousand really excellent people. And then over here, we will just raise the men at arms. What if we merge those armies together? That's 20,000 super elite troops right there. I don't even think we need any levies. We don't need levies, do we? They've not got they've not got anything going on at all. So, do you know what? Stop. Stop summoning people up. It's absolutely fine. Let's hang on. Can we go back to the regular map view? There we go. Um, okay. Pop over to here first. So siege this place down. We'll just sort of make our slow but steady way over to the capital. They are mustering up some people, but not too many. Um, oh, somebody's joined in. Somebody's joined in to help them. That's quite nice. These places do not look very difficult to siege down. Let's move time on a bit quicker, shall we? So we've got, what, 10 days to get this. That will be nice and simple. There we go. 15% war score already. And of course, we're getting loads of prisoners, people that we can convert over to Tearsum when we want to let them out. Right, places are being sieged. Where's that? Hang on. Where's Lagwat? Oh, over here. But now they're not sieging it because they're moving around again. Okay, that's a bit strange, but okay, fine, you just do that, it's okay, we've captured this place over here. Right, then we'll go over to here, so 31% of the war score, already done. We've only taken two places. I think if we could, are they gonna, are they gonna go over the sea and maybe take somewhere over here? That would be, that would be annoying if they went over the sea. Right, we can get ourselves a perk, let's get divided attention, that's plus two to our domain limit, I'm not overly bothered by that, but okay, you know, it's sort of okay to have. Right, and then... Go over to there. So what I think we'll do is we need to take this. They want to go over there. Oh no, they're trying to sneak in here. <gasps> you sneaky beakies. Okay, do you know what? It's fine. We'll come and just have a war with you and kill you a bit. Hang on. Wait there for a second. It's going to have a bit of a battle. Um, Heribert has died. And we've got an alliance formed with Martin. Because he's now a ruler. Okay. Captain Martin Swainson. Hang on. Who are you? Your seal fleds. Oh, Okay. Well, that's exciting. We've got an alliance. That was unexpected, but there we go. Splendid. Right, so we'll take that. And, oh, Ethelfrith. Ah, yes, she was going to fail, wasn't she? Yeah, it was a 40% chance. Okay, never mind. Ethelfrith has not converted over to witchcraft, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Right, hang on. So can we convert you then? Let's convert uh, Agalina over 95%. Let's just keep that going. How's that actually looking? How's it looking in here? 21% yeah that's that maybe we won't see that I don't know right and then let's come over here and have a fight with these guys before they unseige that because that would be all a bit tedious wouldn't it? I think we're going to catch them yes we've caught them if we do that I was going to say if we win and it's you know, comprehensive that'll be enough there we go well that was very short I was kind of expecting a great battle but I don't suppose anyone can kind of stand up to us anymore so there we go yes we will take the kingdom of Tehet it is now ours. Disband all those troops. Let's just go and have a look. Oh my word. <laughs> There's a great big load of cupboard over here now in Northern Africa, which is very exciting. Okay, that's exciting. How do we do in that battle? I mean, yeah, we got loads of devotion, loads of fame. Can't do much with that. We lost 147 people. They lost 10,000. Oh my goodness me. That, oh, oh, it was an actual slaughter. 13 people survived. Oh, I don't, I'd don't. i never feel that good doing that. But you know what? It's fine. It's war and such like. And now we've got quite a lot of places. We've got quite a lot of places under our control right now. Okay. Okay. Fine. So we need to sort that out. Who would like to become the king or queen of this place? Hang on. I bet we've got duchies that we can create, haven't we? So there we go. Right. Let's create some duchy titles. So that one there, that's already there, but we'll usurp that away because, yeah, because you're a Catholic, so boo, away with you. So you're not going to have that. We'll create that, and I assume can we... Oh, we can usurp that. Okay, we'll have that, 
and we'll create that. Okay, lovely. What about this one down here? Is that ours? No, that's not ours. Okay, what about that? Can't create that because that's gone out of our land. Okay, so now we've got ourselves all these places. So who would like to have all of these? So let's grant this to a variety of exciting people. Let's give this to, I know, our brother. How about we make Ethelred the king of down here? So he can have that place. So let's give him, let's give him that place there. And then also the, the petty kingdom of to hurt. So yeah, have the petty kingdom title of that and then have the petty kingdom of to hurt as well. So have those two, because that'll make you quite powerful. So, okay, grant you those titles. So there you go, brother of ours. We're giving you a nice thing. And then this can go to, I don't know, who's got good stewardship that's not already got land? Who are you? Pavel. Um, oh, hang on. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Cupboard dynasty people only, please. There we go. Um, you, Maria. You're quite good. 26. Midas touched. You look pretty good. Yeah, you. So you can have those three. There you go. So you've now become a duchess, which is nice. This place up here, grant this to somebody who's good at stewardship, who's not already got land. Um, Ormond Red. Why don't we give that to Ormond Red? He can have a little bit of land as well. So our son, he can, he can, you know, sort of learn the ropes. He's only 18, so we can learn down here. Yeah, okay. We'll give that to you. So you can have the petty kingdom of... Bijaya, possibly. Probably saying that all sorts of wrong. There we go. And then the Petty Kingdom of Zab, which is a wonderful name. Okay, right. So who would like this? Let's go down here. Um, Walthoff is very good. He's very, very good in terms of stewardship. Not so good at martial. Do you know what? You can have that. Let's just give it to all of our relatives. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure that's not in any way really, really dodgy. We've also got that earldom there. Don't know what that is. Hang on, don't know where that is. Right, okay. So you have all that stuff. Right, where is that? Where's that weird... Hang on a minute. Hang on. What have I got? Um, titles. Click that. Where is that? The Eldom of Guardia down there. Oh, okay. I don't really want that place. Not overly fond of this place. Can we give this to somebody? Who would like this place? Who would love a, love a nice remote county down here? Pavel. No, what? hang on. We haven't got the cupboard thing on. <laughs> Not Pavel. Pavel, stop getting in the way. Um, You. Macus. Macus Catherineson Cupboard. You sound amazing. Yeah, you'll do. You can go in. You can go in there and have that earldom. There you go. You enjoy that. And now, in terms of kingdom titles, I imagine we can usurp that away from her. So, yeah, we will be taking that. And then, we will give that to... Yeah. You. It was you, wasn't it? Hang on. Just make sure. Ethelred's got all of those. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, so it can go to you, our brother, which is nice. So yes, we'll give you the kingdom of Tahert or Tahert, how you say it. And there we go. You are now a king. I mean, it took you a while to become a king, but there we go. Splendid. Right, can we create any more titles? Titles can be created. The Duchy of Castile and the Duchy of Galicia. Hang on. Didn't we already have these? Okay, hang on. Castile is... Okay, we'll just give it to you because you've already got the thing. You can have... You can have the Petty Kingdom of Castile. Enjoy that. And then the Duchy of Galicia. Were they not already created? It must have happened to mean they're not created anymore. Okay, you can have that. I don't really care who you are. You can have that because you've got the county that's the capital of that duchy. So yes, you have that. Okay, wonderful. And then we can transfer some people about. Yeah, do that. Makes sense. Splendid. There we go. So our Great Holy War was actually very, very quickly won. It was not that complicated at all. And then, yeah, of course, if we then zoom out, there is now a great big load of cupboard over here, which looks, it looks wonderful. It looks very good. So I think we will finish things up for the moment. But when we come back next time, I think we need to do one very important thing. We need to put all our efforts into mending the Great Schism. Because as we saw earlier, Empress Elswith is now a religious icon, which is wonderful. Which means that she's got this tick here on the requirements. Now, I thought that was going to be really difficult to get. I thought that was going to be very, very tricky. But no, we've got that. So now all we need to do is go and get Alexander. Alexandria, and then make sure that Alexandria is under Tist rule, which is going to be absolutely fine. That is not a problem. And then we can mend the Great Schism. The Great Schism can be repaired with Great Schism tape and Great Schism glue. And then that means that Tism 
will be the only legitimate branch of Christianity, which will be wonderful. And then when that's done, when we've mended the Great Schism, I think we will call it a day for Crusader Kings 3. I think that will bring an end to the tale of the Cupboard Dynasty very, very well indeed. It's a really good suitable end point. You know, they've gone from nothing and then created this wonderful great big empire and a whole new religion and that's been established as the one true Christian religion. I think that will end the series very, very well indeed. I think that's a really suitable, so you've got a nice apt end point for it. I know a lot of people in the comments have been saying, oh, go and you know, conquer Russia, conquer India, that's where tea comes from, all that kind of stuff. But that would take us ages. That would take us so long to go and get claims on all these places and go and do the wars and the fighting and everything else. It would just take ages, particularly to get over here. I mean, you know, there's a lot of distance between the edge of our empire here and India kind of over here. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of land we need to conquer. And yeah, there is an end date. It's 1450 something, I think. So, you know, the game will end. The game will end at some point, and I don't think we'd have time to go and conquer all that stuff. And I think, yeah, mending the Great Schism is a really good end point to finish our run for the Cupboard Dynasty in Crusader Kings 3. So, hopefully, hopefully you can join me for that next time. I mean, there's there's work to do. There is work to do. We don't even have a claim on Alexandria, so we need to do that. There'll be a bit of warring going on as well. There'll be some fighting. And then, of course, when we're done, when we're done, when everything's finished, we've mended the schism, we'll then go and have a look through the family tree, because I know lots of people are going, please show us the family tree. So yeah, when it's all finished, when it's all finished, we will have a quick nosy through the family tree and just, you know, see how very big it is now because it's got a bit silly. So we'll do that as well. But that is all for next time. Next time, which will be the final part of the Cupboard Dynasty's journey in Crusader Kings 3. So yes, hopefully you will be there to see all that kind of stuff, what goes on and the mending of the Great Schism. But we will finish up for the moment. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in the finale of Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Oh no, not the piggy wigs. Want them to be healthy. Happy pigs, please. Raspberries, raspberries, raspberries everywhere. And I went through and sold a load of turkeys as well, and they still come back. They're still coming back to haunt me. The storm moisture's going down. We need rain. We need rain. What's going... <laughs>